of December 2020. So on behalf of ISKCON Scarborough, we would like to warmly welcome each one of you to this uh, ninth successive month of virtual classes. Uh, it's the beautiful uh, month of Margas Irsa, uh, which is also referred to as Keshava Mas. Uh, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita 10.35, Masana Margas Irsa Ham of months, I am Margas Irsa, which is November, December uh, time frame in general. So today we are honored to welcome back His Grace Roini Priya Prabhu to give his, I think it's sixth class since uh, March of 2020. Uh, he's given fascinating classes. Uh, the topics are cleaning the temple of our heart. I think it was a two-part series followed by past times of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Then we had a topic on uh, working without attachment and also another topic um, a titled uh, a Honesty, a Rich Legacy. Then we had a class on Govardhan Leela. And today it's a very unique uh, topic, Honey, the Symbol of Sweetness and Prosperity. So for the benefit of all the devotees, um, uh, all of our classes are recorded and posted uh, on YouTube. And you can also search uh, in our website. Rohini Priya Prabhu graduated uh, uh, with an MBBS degree from India, Bachelor of Medicine and uh, Bachelor of Surgery, but did not pursue his career as a doctor to cure sick patients, but started his lifelong study of Bhakti Yoga after his graduation from the university. And since then, he's been traveling and preaching the essence of the scriptures around the world. So we're grateful to Prabhu. He's uh, currently based out of Seattle, um, and uh, hopefully he may be able to come to Canada a little later uh, next year, uh, depending on how things work out with regard to travel restrictions. So with that, I would like to invite uh, His Grace Rohini Priya Prabhu to speak us on the topic of honey, the symbol of sweetness and prosperity. Uh, we will extend it till 12.15 because we'll have one hour class. So we'll go on for 15 minutes more than our uh, uh, scheduled close time. And last few minutes, we will take uh, questions. And I kindly urge more devotees to ask questions okay so it doesn't have to be the same person or one or two people asking the question and that does not have to be the norm we want this to be opened up so everybody uh, can ask the question and uh, this is an opportunity to clarify uh, the questions that you may have and please restrict your questions if possible to the topic that Prabhu is speaking today so that uh, there'll be continuity so with that uh, I will uh, uh, hand it over to His Grace Rohini Priya Prabhu thank you Prabhu Hare Krishna thank you very much Hare Krishna ओ्ञानतिरांधस्तज्ञाजनशलाकया चक्षुरमित ये नस्म श्रीगुरव नम श्रीचैतन्यमनोभीष्ट स्थित ये न भूतले स्वयं रूप कदा ददाति स्वपदाति नमो विष्णुपदा कृष्ण प्रेष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नमिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देश तारिणी पंचकलकूभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो निनंद श्रीअद्वैत गदाधर शिवाशादि गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम राम हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे हरे Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare. Hare Krishna, everyone, especially uh, all the devotees from our Iskon Scarborough um, Yatra uh, congregation. And um, I'm very happy to be uh, able to serve all of you once again. I'm sorry I was a bit late today, and therefore we will be extending the program a little bit today. So I'm extremely sorry. and. Uh, Coming to our topic, um, honey, the uh, symbol of sweetness and prosperity. I was uh, recently uh, reading a wonderful purport uh, from the Srimad Bhagavatam. And uh, this purple uh, very much excited me.
Um, and this purport, this is from the first uh, Canto 11 chapter, verse number 26. Shri Prabhupada, he writes, the essence of every, everything is the Supreme Lord. He is called the Saram. And those who sing and talk about him are called the Sarangas or the pure devotees. The pure devotee is always hankering after the lotus feet of the Lord. The lotus feet has a kind of honey which is transcendentally relished by the devotees. They are like the bees who are always after the honey. Shlarupa Goswami, the great devotee Acharya of the Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya, has sung a song. Oh, my Lord Krishna, I beg to offer my prayers unto you. My mind is like the bee and it is after some honey. Kindly, therefore, give my mind. Kindly, therefore, give my bee mind a place at your lotus feet, which are the resources of all transcendental honey. I know that even big demigods like Brahma do not see the rays of the nails of a lotus feet, even though they are engaged in deep meditation for years together. Still, O oh infallible one, my ambition is such, for you are very merciful to your surrender devotees. O oh Madhava, I also know that I have no genuine de devotion for the service of your lotus feet, but because of your lordship, but because your lordship is inconceivably powerful, you can do what is impossible to be done. Your lotus feet can deride even the nectar of the heavenly kingdom, and therefore I am very much attracted by them. O Supreme Eternal, please therefore let my mind be fixed at your lotus feet so that I may eternally be able to relish the taste of your transcendental service. And then I looked up on Google to see if there is something about honey that could be uh, interesting. And surprise, I found that honey um, typically symbolizes sweetness and well-being or prosperity. Many lands have been addressed as the land of milk and honey. In a Krishna consciousness, we always need inspiration. And inspiration should be such that it gives us some taste. There is some sweetness in the experience, in the experiences that inspire us. There should be some taste in the experiences that we have when we practice spiritual life with great motivation. Many a times, words such as motivation, inspiration, are very symbolic of struggle. Determination also is another word that symbolizes or that um, kind of brings to the mind the idea of hardship, harshness, struggle. One must be determined uh, to do such and such. So it's there is the idea that one has to struggle, one has to fight, one has to be brave. So uh, this um, is all right. Definitely, uh, as humans, as conscious, conscious beings, we have to work and work hard because time 
gives us one opportunity. And if we use that opportunity, uh, then uh, we receive, uh, receive the results. And if the opportunity is lost, then it is gone forever. That is how time is in this material world. So as rational humans or thoughtful human beings, we need to do that. We need to uh, be focused. We need to be able to use our time and energy uh, to one's utmost benefit. So yes, when we speak of uh, inspiration, uh, finding inspiration, or when we speak of uh, being inspired to do something, it could be indicative of um, finding um, some space, some place within us, finding some energy within us to go on or around us to go on. So there is the idea of uh, working hard or this conception of struggling against all odds. However, as conscious, conscious beings, we also need to find uh, some taste. We need to find, uh, we need happiness. Uh, we need happy surroundings. We need to be happy within. We need to be able to dive into some source of happiness um, within and without. And therefore, our experiences uh, in our practices of Krishna consciousness should be filled um, most of the times uh, with sweetness. That is what Krishna consciousness is about. We've heard that Krishna consciousness is about sweetness, it's about being happy. Uh, Many times it is spoken that devotees uh, at least look to be the happiest uh, community in the world. All kind of devotees, devotees of mm, the various forms of the Supreme Lord, all the devotees, the, the entire uh, congregation of devotees worldwide and in the 14 planetary systems, they look quite a happy lot. Because they, they experience some taste, they experience some attraction to Krishna. And for that, they work hard. Or for that, uh, they stay focused. But attraction is so intense, or it is supposed to be so intense, that attraction is supposed to be so mesmerizing uh, that uh, one's attention is completely um, caught by the object of our attraction, Krishna. In another place, in the uh, when uh, Shukdev Maharaj is speaking uh, to Parikshit, to King Parikshit, uh, he states, uh, "What is the nature of devotees?" His uh, Shukdev Goswami says. The devotees of the Lord are accustomed to licking up the honey available from the lotus feet of the Lord. What is the use of topics which simply waste one's valuable life? Athavasya padam bhoja makaranda liham satam kimanne rasadala pe ayusho yadasad veyaha. So makaranda liham satam. Makaranda is a Sanskrit word for honey. So makaranda liha means tasting the nectar of the honey. Satam, satam are the devotees of the Lord. So the topics of the Lord and the topics uh, which uh, glorify the various aspects of service to the Lord 
whether it is in terms of the Lord's beauty, whether it describes the Lord's holy, uh, uh, the holy dham, the Lord's holy abode, uh, whether it describes the activities of the devotees of the Lord, uh, whether there are descriptions of the Lord's paraphernalia, the paraphernalia, the Lord's associates, whichever it may be. These topics uh, attract the attention of the devotees because they uh, they feel that it is it is nectarian. They feel that it is uh, sweet like honey. Now, these topics are are so uh, wonderful that having tasted it, one gets stuck onto such nectarian topics. Once these topics are very sticky. If, if one comes in contact with the topics of Krishna consciousness, uh, then uh, we find that we are uh, stuck onto it. Just as, you know, as, as, um, my attempt at making a joke. Um, someone asked that how is it that bees always have uh, sticky hair? And not the bees, they have hair on their legs. That is where the pollen gets stuck and they carry pollination uh, or they participate in the pollination process. Anyways, so the question is, why do bees have sticky hair? And the answer is because they use honeycombs. You know, hair comb like that. It's a nice one, Prabhu. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so devotees, uh, we never realized that how uh, when we when we put our fingers, you know, when we kind of enter into the topics of Krishna, our fingers become sticky. You know, you you kind of um, get attached to those uh, beautiful descriptions about Krishna and Krishna consciousness, and that is the uh, the sweetness that is very often spoken about by uh, various uh, descriptions in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Prosperity is another aspect of um, a happy living, prosperity or well-being. Typically, a prosperous person would be considered as somebody who has a lot of wealth or comfort, etc facilities, more to do with wealth, more to do with uh, having properties, um, real estate, or facilities, etc. So being prosperous. And, and that is right too. Um, what Another question, um, I, and there is a kind of a pun intended here. It is also um, kind of a joke. Another question asked, what would a, a bee who is truant uh, who's who's not behaving properly? Be behaving properly. Uh, what would be uh, be, uh, be told? And the answer is, beehive. Uh, it's like an accented way of saying, beehive. Um, you know, behave. Yeah. So beehive. <laughs> so yes, uh, prosperity. 
we are already always taught that one must take care of one's pennies so that one can be prosperous. Um, similarly, in our Krishna consciousness, we have to uh, understand that uh, when we practice, uh, when we do our practices of Krishna consciousness, when we are uh, sincere in our sadhana, in our daily practices, then that uh, helps us uh, be behaved. That helps us be uh, properly situated uh, and focused and oriented in our human form of life. And by uh, when when we uh, when uh, when such a behavior naturally dawns upon us, when it naturally grows within us, such such a such an attitude of sincerity and practices discipline. Uh, then it uh, it reveals a kind of prosperity that is unimaginable in this material world. Uh, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, there is uh, the teachings that Yamaraj or the instructions that Yamaraj is giving to his servants, Yamadutas, it is about how to distinguish between those who are well-behaved and who may not be well-behaved. It is not just the externals, but it is uh, uh, to do with how their, what their consciousness is, what their intents are uh, between um, well-behaved and truant people, the difference. And uh, Yamaraji says that devotees who always lick the honey from the lotus feet of Lord Krishna do not care at all for material activities which are performed under the three modes of material nature and which bring only misery. Indeed, devotees never give up the lotus feet of Krishna to return to material activities. Others, however, who are addicted to Vedic rituals because they have neglected the service of the lotus feet of the Lord and are enchanted by lusty desires, sometimes perform acts of atonement. Nevertheless, being incompletely purified, they return to sinful activities again and again. So Yamaraji is uh, Uh, the verse is Vishnangri Padma Madolena Punar Vishta Maya Guneshu Ramate Vrijina Vaishu Anyastukama Hata Atma Raja Pramarshitam Ihe the Karma Yata Eva Raja Panasya Krishnangri Padma Madolen. Madhu is the Sanskrit name for honey. Madhu also means sweetness. Krishna is called as Madhu too. Madhupati. One of Krishna's names is Madhupati or Madhu. So this is from the sixth canto. Chapter 3, verse number 33. This description. Within this uh, message, Yamaraji is pointing out to the fact that people sometimes or many a times may be repentant. They may feel unhappy with the way they have performed and they, they may want to repent and reform. However, if that repentance is simply out of a desire to be materially prosperous, or if it is out of fear of getting retribution, 
if the uh, repentance is just to reassure or be reassured about our future, then the consciousness is incompletely purified. Then there are greater chances that one may go back to activities that pollute our consciousness, which are called as sinful activities. And the reason is that one is attached to that which is not Krishna. Even if we perform pious activities which are unrelated to Krishna, for example, pious activities without acceptance of the Supreme Lord, pious activities just believing that karma is all powerful and therefore if I add good now, I will have a better future. And for this purpose, if I have to accept the Supreme Lord, all right. So if there is less compliance or not proper compliance with the acceptance of the reality of Krishna, then uh, such pious activities, which are referred to as here in this verse, uh, Yamaraji is calling them as Vedic rituals. Iheta karma yata. Activities or um, ordained activities would not give us the ultimately the ultimate desired desired result. We may get some kind of desired result, but not the ultimate desired result. So, what is the right consciousness in which uh, such activities could be performed? The right consciousness is only available if one tastes sweetness, just as one finds sweetness and various objects in this material world. One similarly finds sweetness in all the activities of our uh, spiritual practices. We can begin with a couple, one or two, like we may like Kirtan or we may like reading or we may like uh, survey, Shingar, you know, various, uh, we may like to do various kinds of decorations for the pleasure of the Supreme Lord. Then uh, the intent there is to please the Supreme Lord and the activity uh, helps us uh, bring forth our intent or it carries our intent uh, to the Supreme Lord. So uh, Yamaraji, he says that uh, this Consciousness or this attraction is um, found within the devotees because they lick the honey from the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. And uh, when you speak of lotus feet of Lord Krishna, it is definitely all the, the, the form of the Lord that is a physical form when you speak in terms of physical, you know, like the Lord has a form. So the lotus feet is very attractive because just the, the feature of the lotus feet is attractive. You know, you get attracted to various features of people around you. So Krishna has beautiful features too. Every limb of his body is very attractive, very well formed. Uh, in most prob probability, the uh, idea of the lotus feet is to do with service. It's about taking shelter and rendering, and rendering service. So when service is done, just because we are attracted to that service, knowing very well 
that this is uh, being performed for the pleasure of Krishna, for the pleasure of Shri Shri Radha and Krishna. Then uh, that hard work, just as the bees, they do the hard work to gather the honey and the nectar is tasted by uh, so many other people too. So similarly, the hard work that we put in, then uh, Krishna becomes pleased because Krishna, uh, he tastes the, the texture or the, the consistency of our uh, service. And we taste uh, the sweetness of Krishna being pleased. Uh, uh, this is a realization uh, that has been referred to time and again in our literatures, in our Vedic scriptures. So uh, devotees do not uh, miss out on the material prosperity that may be around us if we do not have it. Why? Because they are tasting the honey from the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. So there is material prosperity, which is all right. At the same time, uh, being able to, uh, or having an opportunity to be free from the, the idea that prosperity has a beginning and an end and subscribing to the idea or being subscribers of the idea that uh, prosperity is eternal is, on, is only possible when we have uh, access to spiritual wealth or access to the spiritual domain or access to spiritual happiness. So material prosperity is all right. However, it has a beginning and an end. And, and. That is for sure. It has a manufacturing date and it has an expiry date. Uh, the experience of tasting uh, the existence, the, 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 the conception or the feeling of Krishna's pleasure, Krishna being pleased, is eternal. And that is what uh, makes Krishna consciousness attractive. The externals of Krishna consciousness definitely attractive because um, uh, those externals of Krishna consciousness, like um, you know, uh, being in the association of devotees when there is very good kirtan happening, or being in front of the deities and having a wonderful experience of seeing them, of seeing how well they are being served, you know, the dashingar, their decorations, etc., 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 or in prashad for that extent. Uh, when we, when I say externals, what I mean is that um, the experience is coming through uh, material ingredients. The senses uh, can uh, interact with the material ingredients that have been spiritualized. Like the deity is um, made up of marble, which is now spiritual. So it is no longer ordinary marble, it is spiritual. It is uh, a spiritual entity now, or spiritual moiety now. Similarly, prashad is carbs, proteins, and some uh, taste in it, spices. Uh, However, it is spiritualized now because Krishna has accepted that uh, food, that cooked food. Similarly, similarly the decorations uh, are flowers and leaves and various other uh, objects that are used, various other paraphernalia, which are all material, but now because they are um, on the altar, so they are spiritualized. It is now spiritual. So, uh, through, these, um, uh, through these experiences, through such means, 
uh, one can access or one should be able to access one should try one's utmost to access that which is coming through uh, these uh, elements of material creation and that is um, the taste of having uh, of being in touch with krishna being pleased krishna is is an abode of pleasure and when we contact that abode of pleasure uh, the the abode of uh, sweetness when we contact that when we touch that when we are able to access that then we when we ac then we access something that is eternal uh, so we use our material senses uh, to facilitate and that experience we use this material body we use uh, the books which are actually uh, words you know they are just script in the material form uh, which we call scriptures uh, we all these are spiritualized objects now which help facilitate us achieve that experience which is eternal which is never lost so that experience that eternal experience will never be destroyed by time Time can never touch it. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, is the Supreme Lord Krishna. And just as Krishna is the abode of sweetness, Madhurya, then Madhurya along with compassion or sweetness with unlimited compassion added to it, especially added to it, especially flavored by that, is the uh, form of Lord Chaitanya. That is called as Audhari. And uh, when the Lord is compassionate, that brings in a lot of prosperity. You know? Uh, if somebody becomes compassionate towards us, then they can offer us prosperity too. Yes. So, uh, in the uh, Chaitanya Charitamrit, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, he uh, glorifies Lord Chaitanya by describing how the devotees of Lord Chaitanya are so connected to him. So, uh, Kaviraj Goswami, he says, Shri Chaitanya Padam Bhoja Madhupebhyo Namo Namaha Kathanche Dashre Desha Shwapitad Gandh Bhag Bhavit Shri Chaitanya Padam Bhoja Madhupebhyo Namo Namaha Madhu, the word Madhu is again used here. Madhu is the Sanskrit word for honey. So the translation is, the devotees are bee-like and they always taste the honey of the lotus feet of Lord Chaitanya. Even a doggish non-devotee somehow takes shelter of such devotees, he or she enjoys the aroma of that beautiful lotus flower that has the honey in it. So we, we spoke about, very briefly from the scriptures, we spoke about how service and service unto the Supreme Lord and taking shelter of the Supreme Lord, which are symbolized by his lotus feet, are very sweet, uh, like honey. And honey also brings in prosperity because the Lord is very compassionate. Where is the Lord available and how is the Lord available? Can we access him uh, by our own uh, individual abilities? Yes, it is by our own effort that uh, we have to access the Lord's sweetness so that we have prosperity in our lives. 
Um, however, our individual efforts are they be, they become more sublime, or our individual efforts are properly rewarded when we follow in the footsteps of those who are completely surrendered to their law. Because those surrendered souls, they are following in the footsteps of the previous surrendered souls or the parampara. So there is a parampara of followership. And this parampara has been established since time immemorial. Gopi Bharatur Pada Kamalayor Das Das Anudas. Uh, to practice our spiritual lives uh, in the mood of being the servant of the servant of the servant of those who serve Krishna, the gopis, the lord of the gopis. So, uh, typically, when the scriptures, the ancient scriptures, especially the Vedic scriptures refer to a dog, they refer to this uh, aspect of a dog, this mentality of a dog. There are uh, various ways that a dog has, uh, the dog's qualities have been glorified in the scriptures too. And there are certain aspects of a dog's mentality that has been shown to be detrimental. So here, the, the idea that a dog uh, perform certain acts that are unhealthy for the dog itself. The dog is not able to uh, discriminate between exalted personalities and ordinary personalities like the Tulasi leaf. And the dog gets is easily distracted too. So a doggish non-devotee, Shopi Sure means a dog. So because of this quality that a dog has, and plus a dog uh, would also be uh, not very concerned about the kind of food that it eats. So it eats uh, a dog, a street dog specifically, eats nasty things. Uh, consumes uh, Unmentionable, unmentionable food objects. For the dog, it may be food, but for humans, it's unmentionable. So somebody who has a, a mentality like that is considered to be having the mentality of a dog. So a non-devotee or someone who gets easily distracted, wants to taste uh, um, unmentionable, unmentionable things, which are basically uh, taste material happiness, so, uh, even if such a devotee takes shelter of those who are surrendered uh, to other surrendered souls, uh, who are surrendered to the servants of the servants of the Lord, then such a devotee also gets the opp opportunity to taste the aroma of the lotus flower, to taste the aroma, to taste, uh, to understand uh, the nature and the benefits of taking shelter of Krishna, the nature and benefits of trying to serve Krishna, of performing devotional service. That is, uh, they otherwise they wouldn't have that facility. So they get that facility to be able to uh, at least feel the fragrance, to smell the fragrance, uh, to enjoy the aroma, and then they will taste the honey later on when they they do the hard work when they practice uh, their sadhana properly, their, the, the regulative uh, principles and the regulated activities, the activities of regulation properly, then they will taste the honey too. Of course, there is the, uh, the fragrance that they enjoy and then they enjoy the taste of the honey also. So Lord Chaitanya is specifically uh, uh, glorious uh, in this age of Kali Yuga. Because this, in this age of Kali Yuga, there is the need 
uh, to receive a lot of compassion. Life is uh, really uh, very challenging in Kali Yoga because our intentions are so very skewed in Kali Yoga uh, that uh, we are a danger to ourselves more than anyone else. We hurt ourselves by polluting our consciousness time and again. So we need a lot of compassion. We need um, you know, a lot of mercy compared to the other ages, in comparison to the other ages. We need somebody to uh, hold us up. And uh, the, the characteristics of Lord Chaitanya fulfills that need. Hence, in Kali Yuga, uh, we are uh, every every soul that comes in touch with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is very very fortunate. You know, uh, there's that um, beautiful poem. Uh, just the first two lines. I will I will recite. Jadi na hoy to tabe ke hoy to. So, if Lord Chaitanya had not been there, then it would be, it would have, life would have been so difficult. So, we are very fortunate to have Lord Chaitanya. He is uh, that extra large uh, reservoir of honey that can give us sweetness and prosperity. Now, having found such uh, devotees who constantly are tasting the nectar of uh, Lord Chaitanya's uh, lotus feet and uh, uh, because of the association of such devotees, we also enjoy the aroma of the lotus flower that has that honey, uh, which makes us also want to uh, behave and be like and be like bees taste that honey to gather that honey mm. so it is natural to feel gratitude uh, towards uh, such association of people specifically those uh, who go the extra mile they are called as the siksha uh, uh, gurus, those who teach us, they go that extra mile. Uh, they are very sincere in their own practices. They are very, very focused to um, uh, be advancing in the Krishna consciousness. And uh, they also uh, show us the guiding light. And for such uh, wonderful association, a natural prayer uh, arises from the heart, just as Thakur Bhaktivinod has written a prayer uh, in his uh, book of uh, prayers, the Prarthana. Shri Guru Charanamrita Madhika Sevane Matta Hoye Krishna Gona Gabo Brindabone Sorry Matta Hoye Krishna Gona Jabo Brindabone By drinking the honey wine ambrosia that has washed the lotus feet of my divine spiritual master I will become madly intoxicated and sing widely about the glorious qualities of Lord Krishna in Vrindavan. So it is Gabo Vrindavan. So Shri Guru Charanamrita Madhvika Sevane. Again, the word Madhvika means coming from Madhu or Madhu like. The lotus feet. Drinking the honey wine ambrosia. Matta hoye Krishna Guna. Gabo Vrindavani. I will sing uh, the glorious qualities of the Lord of Vrindavan wildly 
in great ecstasy being madly intoxicated so uh, one feels uh, very very eager to associate with and one feels very very grateful to the association of such siksha gurus those who teach us about the uh, wondrous qualities of krishna and teach us about the uh, glories of serving krishna about the glories of devotional service and what happens uh, when what is the uh, natural conclusion of uh, such a journey of finding honey and tasting honey what is the natural uh, conclusion of that so bhakti no thakur in his uh, hari bhakti kalpalatika which is a beautiful collection of his realizations in the form of uh, poems in the form of a book hari bhakti kalpalatika he says tena smaranti vishaya nach karm kandam tena smaranti purushartha chatushtayam cha tena smaranti sutadara grihatma deham ye krishna pad kamale madupan mat those who are engaged in drinking the lotus from the honey from the lotus feet of shri krishna do not think about their family children husbands wives homes or their own bodies material objects fruitive activities or the four goals of life dharma artha kama and moksha and therefore a devotee uh, in eagerness having understood uh, this principle that devotee in all eagerness prays my dear lord if we engage our lust in serving you our anger against those who blaspheme you our greed in honoring your remnants our illusion in trying to achieve your lordships our ego in being your devotees and our pride in drinking the honey of your lotus feet then we may easily defeat the six enemies of lust anger greed illusion false ego and pride which are always surrounding us so thakur bhakti vinod uh, is beautifully giving us a goal that is achievable by our on practices in krishna consciousness when shri chaitanya mahaprabhu appeared in this world he appeared to uh, freely make available this ambrosia this uh, nectar of krishna bhakti of devotional service unto krishna and he came with so many associates and so many wonderful devotees who uh, through their these devotees uh, through their relationship that they had with lord chaitanya and through the love and uh, service attitude that they exhibited towards lord chetan uh, they um, they reveal a world so sweet and so attractive the world of navadweep the world of uh, shri gauranga mahaprabhu that uh, bhakti sadan saraswati thakur maharaj he stated 
just to be able to taste the nectar of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes as revealed in Chaitanya Bhagavatam and Chaitanya Charitamrita. The people of this world will learn Bengali. Just to be able to taste it. It is so sweet. So Krishna's pastimes that have been described in the Vedic literatures in the Sanskrit are very sweet. The same Krishna when he appears as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The sweetness that is revealed is especially um, favorable for uh, us conditioned souls in Kali Yoga. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was very dear to the devotees from Shri Khanda. And in Chaitanya Bhagavat, uh, all the residents of Shri Khanda, which is a, uh, a small town, um, which was a small town uh, when Lord Chaitanya was performing his pastimes. Uh, Shri Khanda was specific, the entire, entire town was Krishna conscious. They were, they were always chanting the names of Gauranga and Nityananda Prabhu. Lord Chaitanya and Lord uh, Nityananda. There was one specific devotee uh, about whom I would like to speak very briefly in the, in the next five to ten minutes. Um, he was an associate of Lord Chaitanya. He had come to Navadweep uh, as a young man to study there. And he would uh, always uh, perform wonderful kirtan, specifically uh, his dance uh, in his dancing in kirtan was very attractive to Lord Chaitanya. There were very few devotees uh, that would be uh, able to glorify Lord Chaitanya as a supreme personality of God. Lord Chaitanya. Um, would always exhibit the mood of a devotee of Lord Krishna and therefore uh, whenever he would hear glorifications about himself, specifically when uh, he would hear devotees glorify him as a Supreme Lord, he would uh, cover up his ears with his two hands, both his ears he would cover up with his hands and call out loudly, Vishnu, Vishnu, Vishnu. He, would, he wouldn't uh, want to hear his own glories as a Supreme Lord uh, during such uh, times. And he would always say that the living entities never can never be uh, the Supreme Lord, can never be equal to the Supreme Lord. This was his mood as a devotee of the Lord. Narhari Sarkar the devotee that we would like to talk about today was one of the few devotees that could glorify Lord Chaitanya and Lord Chaitanya would hear his glorifications. He could glorify Lord Chaitanya in front of him. That was the sweet relationship that Narari Sarkar had with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Narari Sarkar was a resident of Shri Khand. Lord Chaitanya said that his, his uh, very life and himself, uh, he had dedicated to the residents of Sri Khanda. He was their property. And uh, they could do as they wish with him. So he really loved the residents of Sri Khanda. Uh, Narhari uh, Sarkar uh, was the son of a very great uh, devotee of Lord Krishna. And he was one of three uh, siblings. And uh, his other siblings were also 
uh, followers of Lord Chaitanya. Uh, one of them was the famous Mukunda Sarkar, uh, who had a son, Raghunandan Thakur, and uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita and Chaitanya Bhagavat uh, described the glories of these devotees, these two devotees, Mukunda Sarkar and his son Raghunandan Thakur. Madhavadas, who was uh, a great, uh, very good uh, Kirtaniya singer also, uh, was one of the uh, brothers of Narhari. So Narhari, uh, Mukunda and uh, Madhava were three brothers. They lived in Shri Khandadha and every year they would, uh, after Lord Chaitanya had taken uh, sannyas, uh, every year uh, they would, uh, along with the other residents of Shri Khanda, like Sulochan and others, they would go to Jagannath Puri and participate in the Ratyatra celebrations there. And um, Lord Chaitanya would have seven parties of uh, Kirtaniyas, uh, people, who, uh, devotees who would sing, dance, play the Mridanga, Kartals. You would have seven parties of such devotees uh, perform for the pleasure of Lord Jagannath. And in one of those parties, Narhari uh, Sarkar, along with his nephew, Raghunandan, who was very dear to him, very, very dear to him, would be the main dancers. And Lord Chaitanya would love to see both of them dance. He would be uh, lost in uh, happiness seeing both of them dance. Uh, when Narhari Sarkar was uh, at, an, uh, at, a, at a slightly advanced age, he was uh, residing um, in Shrikhanda. Not a very advanced age, but uh, quite an elderly age. Uh, his son Raghunandan, or oh, sorry, his nephew Raghunandan was a young man by now. Lord Nityananda had come to Shrikhanda to visit him from Kardaha. Kardaha was the place where Lord Nityananda was residing after Lord Chaitanya had asked him to come back to, Jagan, uh, to Bengal and uh, stay there. So Lord Nityananda came. And uh, there are uh, descriptions that Lord Nityananda had invoked the presence of Lord Gauranga to come. So both Gaur and Nitai were there. And uh, Narhari could see both of them. So uh, he was very, very happy to have them come to his house. He invited them, he gave them a nice place to sit and he worshipped them, he offered them wonderful prasad, and both Gaur and Nittai were uh, very happy to reciprocate with him. And Narayana was so happy to see both of them in, the, in his house. Then Lord Nityananda, he revealed the mood of Balara. He said, now that I have, I'm so very happy here, I need my Varuni, I need my, I need honey to drink. Madhu, give me Madhu. Varuni is sometimes Lord Nityananda, Lord Balaram would uh, refer to it as Madhu. Varuni is a special drink uh, made out of honey that is offered to Lord Balaram. It is his, it is his favorite drink. So, where is Madhu? And Narari Sarkar was a little taken aback that, oh, Lord Nityananda needs Madhu. And there was no Madhu, there was no honey in the house. So he goes into his backyard, goes to the, to the back of his house. Um, and in Bengal, uh, people uh, typically, uh, in those days, they would have uh, a small lake at the back of their house. It will be called a Pushkarini or a Pukur. And uh, that would fulfill their needs, you know, uh, daily needs of water would come from that lake. Most of the houses have that in Bengal. So he goes to the Pushkarini, he goes to that lake uh, with a big vessel. And he fills up that vessel with water. 
and he's in this mood of a resident of Vrindavan. As soon as Balaram ji asks for honey, he comes. He, he's in this mood of a resident of Vrindavan. So he goes to his to this lake at the back of his house and fills up a pot with water and he brings it back. And he offers it to Lord Nityananda and also to Lord Goran. And as he pours this uh, liquid uh, from that vessel directly into Lord Nityananda's mouth, because he's in the, in the mood of the resident of Vrindavan now. So Lord Nityananda has his hands cupped like this and he's pouring it into it and he's directly drinking it. It is actually honey. It is actually madhu. And Lord Nityananda was so happy <coughs> to have received honey. He starts dancing in ecstasy. And Narhari Sarkar starts dancing. Lord Goranga is very happy and Lord Goranga also dances with him for a long time. Even today, if we go to Shrikhanda Dham and if you go to the house of Raghunandan Thakur, the brothers would still be staying together. Then at the back of the house is the Pushkarini, is that Pukur, is that lake. Until today it is called as the Madhu Pushkarini. And uh, the Gargonad Desh Deepikait has been revealed that Narhari Sarkar is uh, one of the residents of Vrindavan, one of the gopis whose name is Madhumati. And her service is to bring honey to Radha and Krishna. And in uh, Lord Chaitanya's pastimes, Narari Sarkar uh, offered honey uh, from a lake of water by his intense devotion and by his miraculous potency, by the blessings of Lord Balaram, by the, by the grace of Lord Chaitanya, he offered honey. A madhu to Lord Nityananda and blessed him. Narari Sarkar has been also uh, mentioned by Bhakti Manoj Thakur in his beautiful uh, Gaur Aarti. Narahari Adi Kari Chamaradulai Narari Sarkar is offering Chamara the whisk made of yak, yak tail to Lord Gauranga as he sits on a beautiful jewel throne and receiving worship. Um, this, in this month of Marga Shirsha on the uh, Ekadashi day of the uh, dark fortnight, dark moon fortnight, the Krishna Paksha, Narari Sarkar disappeared uh, from this mortal world and Raghunandan Thakur had such a wonderful celebration and in that celebration uh, Narari Sarkar appeared again to bless him because Raghunandan was feeling so much separation uh, from Narari Sarkar. Uh, he was not just his uncle but also uh, his spiritual master. And uh, even today uh, we find in the house of Raghunandan uh, the, the Samadhi of Narahari Sarkar there. The beautiful uh, pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that have been revealed in the book called as Chaitanya Mangal was written by a great devotee of Lord Chaitanya uh, by the name of Lochandas Thakur. And Lochandas Thakur is uh, the prominent disciple of Narahari Sarkar. So uh, I Hope that all the devotees feel happy hearing about the uh, sweet uh, quality of honey, um, the honey of the lotus feet of the Lord and the prosperity that one achieves uh, taking shelter of Krishna, taking shelter of his lotus feet. And I also hope that uh, uh, we are uh, pleased to hear about uh, Narhari Sarkar who offered uh, honey uh, 
from a lake of water to Lord Nityananda uh, to please him to satisfy. Thank you very much, Hare Krishna. I will stop here. Are there any questions or comments or clarifications? Thank you. Uh, Please let me know. Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhu, for uh, another wonderful class. Um, you know, honey, the symbol of sweetness and uh, prosperity. So we understand uh, how sweet uh, is Lord's lotus feet. And that will be a good uh, segue into next week's uh, session that we are planning to discuss about the different symbols in the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. So it'll be a nice, <laughs> beautiful uh, uh, passage uh, way into that as well. So thank you, Prabhu, for that. Now, how do we understand or realize whether we are tasting that sweetness uh, you're talking about? Because uh, the question is, sometimes we think we have some taste, but it doesn't last long so that, you know, it's it's, it's temporary. So is, is it possible for us to be in that zone all the time for tasting that sweetness of the honey? You know, uh, like like when, when sportsmen, when they're in the zone, you know, they are there, but you don't, you're not in the zone all the time. So is it is it flickering? Is it uh, is it something that we need to work on to increase that uh, connection into that sweetness uh, longer and longer? Thank you for that question. And uh, I think it is appropriate for... Um, wanting to know uh, whether it is possible for us to measure um, our uh, status, to, uh, to know our status in our devotional practices. It is, uh, it is the uh, natural tendency to be able to do that. Um, Krishna consciousness is the natural state of existence of every living entity. It is a normal state of existence of every living entity. So uh, being embodied in a material body is not the regular existence of the living entity. And therefore we are troubled by the, uh, the idea of, or the inconsistency of our presence, our present existence. And especially uh, the idea of death. Many a times, uh, uh, people wonder whether death is really as painful as being bitten by you know, 43,000 odd scorpions, something like that. So when we, when we speak of a natural state of existence or normal state of existence, uh, normalcy does not in any way uh, make us wonder about uh, greatness or wonder about uh, achievements. Being normal, uh, when one, one is uh, not feeling uh, normal, one is not feeling up or down, either excited or morose, uh, one does not generally uh, generally consider or look at achievements because uh, one is stable, one is peaceful, one is uh, one is just uh, happy being in the present. So one of the ways that scriptures uh, explain uh, what is the ecstasy, uh, what is the stage of uh, being uh, advanced or feeling the ecstasy or tasting the honey is that uh, one feels peaceful. One feels uh, equipoised. One feels stable in life. One does not uh, feel any pushings in life. Uh, and the reason scriptures explain that is just as it has been explained that lust, pride, greed, greed, envy, illusion, they kind of just subside. And the reason scripture explained that is uh, because right now our life is governed by these uh, various aspects. However, that is only from the material perspective. That is, that is so that we can understand this, um, this state of existence. That we can understand uh, our, stage, our uh, stage of purification 
through our material senses and material mind. Another state of existence that has been uh, uh, revealed by the scriptures is what is called as uh, symptoms of ecstasy. That is like having goosebumps, hair standing on end, um, or horripilation, you know, uh, sweating a lot, being stunned. And uh, when we read the Chaitanya Charitamrit, especially the Antilila, where uh, some of these uh, symptoms have been described being exhibited by Lord Chaitanya, we hear that sometimes he would exhibit the symptoms for three hours, six hours, nine hours at a stretch. We hear of devotees who have been stunned for like practically 72 hours, which is like three days. Like Abhiram Gopal Thakur, he stood in this. Um, he also stood in a three-four bending form uh, with the trunk of a tree uh, held in his two arms uh, as if he was playing a flute for 72 hours. We hear of Vakresha Pandit dancing for 72 hours without stopping. These descriptions have been given in the scriptures. So forget 72 hours. Let us just think that if we are able to have these experiences for let's say 72 minutes, let's say 24 minutes, then uh, from the material perspective, from the way the material mind and material senses measure things, uh, that would be good progress. Uh, what, what are the symptoms that we're looking for? Like we are astounded just by the sound of the holy names not by the music that's there, just the sound of the holy. Like uh, Lord Chaitanya, he heard someone sing uh, the Gita Govinda and he immediately was mesmerized. Govinda had to hold on to him and say, my dear Lord, uh, please uh, don't go to that place because as a sannyasi, you should not be visiting that place. So just stay where you are. So the sound of the holy uh, should astound one. Melody, uh, which is uh, spiritual melody, sometimes melody is material, you know, therefore we feel like constantly changing stations. Uh, we want different people to be singing different melodies. But there is a spiritual melody, uh, which is called as raga. Uh, for those who, uh, who are trying to uh, be good, singers or good musicians, they understand what is raga. Raga is where you're able to kind of hold on to sound for a long time. Just at that particular decibel, that, that particular sura, they stay with that for hours together through practice. Uh, so, uh, 24 minutes, an hour, uh, like, if not every day, at least every time we are in the middle of such an experience. Another, another uh, symptom is uh, revealed by Parikshit Maharaj. He's telling Subhudev Maharaj that please go on talking about the topics of Krishna because as long as you're talking about the topics of Krishna, uh, my mind is focused and I, uh, I do not need to fear anything. I do not feel the need of hunger or thirst. Or even sleep, and uh, uh, the residents, uh, the the sorry, the the uh, the, uh, the rishis of Naimi Sharan are telling Sutta Goswami that uh, please go on describing the nectarine topics of Krishna because wherever there is the nectarine topics of Krishna, there is no death, and there, therefore there is no fear of death. So please, uh, in, in detail, describe. Uh, the nectarian topic, nectarian topics of Krishna. So, uh, hearing, tasting, seeing, these are the activities of the senses. And when the senses are focused, are astounded, um, it's like uh, when we are completely hooked onto uh, one of these activities of the nine limbs of uh, bhakti, shravanam, kirtanam, uh, hearing about Krishna, glorifying Krishna, chanting about Krishna, remembering Krishna, 
any of these activities dhruva uh, the fourth canto sorry the the shrimad bhagavatam uh, describes about dhruva maharaj the seventh canto uh, sorry uh, prahlad maharaj not dhruva prahlad maharaj the seventh canto uh, he was stunned sometimes he would be so stunned it simply you would feel the presence of krishna as a young child this was even before the appearance of lord narasimha dev because he has uh, he was constantly meditating upon the lord prahlad maharaj somehow he had access to that uh, he could feel the presence of krishna so uh, when we have uh, some bodily symptoms like that the most common common among such bodily symptoms would be tears from our one eyes or goose bumps being stunned and falling down unconscious may not be would be uncommon uh, when these tears uh, flow uh, such that uh, we want to uh, just be there with krishna not 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 uh, with the melody not with the decoration but uh, with krishna uh, who is the supreme lord uh, and when that stays with us for a long time let's say for a half an hour for one hour and it does not disturb our services at a very advanced stage uh, we'll be concerned that you know our emotions are disturbing our services so let's say um, we don't have any services like shringar decoration of the deities or cooking for the deities or cleaning the temple or arranging things for the altar at home etc 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 but something just uh, just kind of um, holds makes us uh, completely mesmerized now that experience has been described in the scriptures to be an experience of nishtha nishtha means form faith that is where one starts feeling uh, the presence of krishna the anarthas uh, the the shortcomings the uh, the pollution the contamination has uh, uh, been washed away uh, almost washed away has been uh, like most of the gross and semi gross uh, contaminations have been washed away very subtle contaminations uh, could be remaining so this uh, kind of form faith uh, it is called as nishtha and the translation is form faith in english and uh, the idea of faith could mean us uh, holding on to something uh, it could mean uh, being uh, very uh, defensive about one's uh, existence as krishna's devotee ready to defend against anything and not being uh, never being disturbed or never being distracted from it but that is not what uh, nishtha uh, that is not all that nishtha implies nishtha also implies being able to hold on being able to be and being able to uh, connect with uh, for a substantial amount of time with krishna to hold on to krishna so that is also called as nishtha uh, 